I invite you to join me in the invitation to worship as we invite one another. Together, let us gather our hearts and minds from busyness and bothering, from worry and weariness, from distraction and despair. Together, we gather our hearts and minds for prayer and praise, for singing and movement, for wonderment and joy. Let us worship God in the beauty of holiness. And let us pray together. Ever living God, who offers grace to all who come to you, glad in this holy place and sacred time, when we can come aside from that which would drag us down, or keep us from being aware of your presence. We are glad to draw near to this time of worship, this place of rest and reflection, or peace and healing, that we may sense your being among us and that we may be filled with joy and wonder. Amen. And as we gather, we acknowledge the place in which we gather. It is a land that is shared with our First Nations people. We are grateful for this sharing, not only of the land, but of times that we can spend together, enriching one another with our various ways of worship and celebration. Thanks be to God for these right relationships that are possible and open to us. Our opening hymn from Voice United 391, and it's going to be on the screen, or you can use your hymn book, God Reveal Your Presence. Receive forgiveness 
would be a terrible thing if, like in the story, everybody was invited to bring their sins, place them in a bag, and lay them at the front of the church. And then as the service ended, they all went and picked up their sins and took them home again. That's what the assurance of pardon is all about. If you confess your sins before God, they are forgiven. You don't need to carry that burden with you when you leave this place. God is a God of forgiveness. We proclaim our faith each and every week as we stand together and recite the words of our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and on this vital spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And remain standing as we sing, Teach Me God to Wonder. It's in our voice in book at 299.
What an appropriate name, he busted my dreams. <laughs> well, he's not here. And so I am going to be speaking about the Old Testament this morning. And that's why the ladder and what appears to be a cloud. And it's taken from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. And no, you don't have to wonder, I'm not going to climb the ladder. Even though somebody said to me this morning, break a leg. <laughs> no, the ladder is about the story. Genesis 28. Reading verse 10 through 19. Then Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed. No wonder with his head on the stone. <laughs> and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the west and to the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in all your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke in his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put in his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been lost previously. Our second reason is one of the parables of Jesus. It's in Matthew 13. And we know that Jesus often talked in parables and told stories. So Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? But he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather from them up? But he said, No lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, gather the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. May God grant us understanding of these and other stories that we read in Scripture. And may these stories find root in our lives, and may they grow like good seed. 
This morning we're going to be favored with a soul by Miriam. She's going to be singing for us, called by earth and sky.
don't want me to sing without a choir. <laughs> thank you to each and every one who have uh, stepped up and, and offered special music throughout the summer, and that will continue into August. <clears throat> I'd like to hear some more stories. Well, how about this one? It's an old one, and you may have heard it before. A couple had been married for many years. One day, as they were traveling by car, the conversation turned to a discussion about when they were first married. And one said to the other, we used to sit so close together. All these years later, look at the distance between us. And said the driver to the passenger, I haven't moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give that story a spiritual slant. That if you have had the sense that the closeness you once felt to God is not a personal reality. Guess who moved? I've got a clue for you. A strong clue. It wasn't God. As the story this morning, another one of the stories this morning, tells us. In the early history of the Old Testament, there was a sense that God must be found only in particular places. You either had to go near the Ark of the Covenant or the Tent of Meeting, or once the temple was built, you could only worship God if you came to the temple. That's why Moses was so surprised to encounter the burning bush, and when he got close, he was told, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then we come to the story of Jacob and the ladder. In his dream, how many of you get up first thing in the morning and try to remember your dream you had the night before? Within a few minutes, it, it kind of disappears unless you stop and write it down. Well, somehow, Jacob remembered the dream and spoke about it later. But in his dream, he had a conversation with God. And he saw in his dream a ladder in which angels were going up and down, up and down, even up through the cloud at the top of the ladder. And God stood above the top of the ladder and spoke to Abraham, to, uh, to Jacob rather. When he awoke the next morning after his uh, lovely sleep on that rock pillow, he said to himself, surely the Lord was in this place. And I did not know it. Surely the Lord was in this place, and I did not know it. How can God be present and we not be aware of that? Is it because our minds are closed, our hearts are solidly encased, our spirits are locked in a prison, that we can't be aware that God is in this place? Jacob's awareness of God's presence between Beersheba and Aram became a holy place. And even though his head slept on a stone, he took that stone and a few others and he made of it a pillar. A holy place. And when he had completed the pillar, he poured oil on it to remind himself and others that this was a place where he had experienced God's presence. A 
another story. In my first pastoral charge, I visited a lady one time, and we had a lovely visit, a lovely conversation, and then I said, would you like me to read a passage of scripture before I leave? And she said, yes. I said, do you have a favorite passage? And she said, yes. She said, I want you to read from Psalm 139. So I opened my Bible and I turned to Psalm 139. I'd read it before. But for this lady, it had particular meaning. And I began to understand why. It's a Psalm of David. Let me read a few verses from it. And maybe you'll understand why this passage was a favorite of this particular person. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off, and you comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For, this, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me. That passage was of such comfort to her in her later years. Knowing that no matter where she was, it was a holy place. Because God was already there. God, where can I escape from your presence? Will it be in heaven? No, because that is God's place. Will it be at the grave? Yes, God has been there too. When Jesus was laid in the tomb. Is God at the dawn of the new day? Of course, why not? He created morning and night. Or at the sun's furthest limit. Or when darkness covers the land. It has turned to light. God, you are even there. In Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well, he explains to her in answer to her question. She said, our fathers worshiped on this mountain. But you Jews say that the only place where one ought to worship is in Jerusalem. Which is it? On this mountain or in Jerusalem? And Jesus replied to her, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father. In a rather famous poem called The Hound of Heaven by Francis Thompson, he writes about the person who flees away from what they thought, what they thought was the wrath of God. That person fled in fear, not wanting the wrath of God to catch up to them. But when they tired of running, and at last turned around, they were met by the hound of heaven, known also as the mercy and forgiveness of God. Even Jacob, nicknamed the trickster, 
for all the tricks that he played on his family, could not flee from the presence of the Lord. This place of worship, where we gather each Sunday, where others join us as they watch the playback of the service on Facebook and YouTube, is a place where our thoughts are specifically directed by all the reminders of what's in this place. That we find God in prayer, in song, in the written and spoken word. If we do not find God in these places like this, Guess who moved? Guess who moved? This is not to say that we do not find God in other places. Holy places can be a building like this, or a small one, or a larger one, or a tent, or underneath a tree, or by the sea, or at a place that is special to us. When we find that we are in the presence of God, that becomes our holy place. A place where we are aware that God is present. I've referred before to Celtic theology, and one of the main tenets of Celtic theology is that there is a very, very thin place between heaven and earth. It's not as thick as we might think it is. It's a very thin place. And God breaks through that thin place when we are open to that holy presence. Brother Lawrence, a monk of earlier centuries, wrote a book called The Practice of the Presence of God. I haven't shared that book with some of you. Just ask for it after I get back from Nova Scotia in a couple of weeks. I'll be happy to share it with you. I love sharing books that some of you know. And some share books with me too. I'm taking a couple of them to Berwick with me this week. But Brother Lawrence, in this book, The Practice of the Presence of God, in which he describes finding the presence of God as he washed the pots and the pans in the kitchen's in the monastery's kitchen. Finding God washing and scrubbing pots and pans. You wouldn't think you'd find God there, but Brother Lawrence did. Because he found it to be a place of service, just as Jesus knelt and washed the disciples' feet. For him, he felt close to God as he was doing that menial task so that others didn't have to do it. I could tell a lot more stories, but I know there's a lot of food up there in the kitchen. <laughs> There'll be other times I can tell more stories. But I do have a question for you. Where have you found your holy place or places? Where have you been that you can say, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, and I just became aware of it? Maybe it's a camp. The good news is, and the psalmist talks about it freely, God is not limited by place or space or time or opportunity. So what makes a place holy? We're part of that. 
We make it holy when we stop, maybe dream, maybe think, maybe meditate. God, are you here? And wonder of wonders, God will in some way answer that cry of the heart. In the, remaining, in the remaining months of this summer, I pray that you will find such holy places. It may be here. It may be somewhere else. Maybe you've had a bad night. Maybe you've slept on a rock like Jacob. But when you wake, may you realize that God was in this place. God was present, even in my dreams. Amen. We're going to sing another hymn. Touch the earth lightly from hymn number 370 of the Voice of the Night. Touch the earth lightly.
the giver of every gift. Here we now dedicate our freely given gifts. This we pray in the name of the one you have given to us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And yet some more giving. We now have a trio who are going to sing, Come to my heart.
we pray for healing for those that need to be healed for happiness for those who are sad and for all those in need we seek your encouragement O oh God we need your encouragement that we may be involved in honest work and just economies in those who practice medicine and those who teach for all the gifts and aptitudes of every person who serve in the way of living as part of community we pray for peace on earth for the generous sharing of the earth's resources and for the responsible sharings of all of those problems for understanding of others for the willingness and openness to regard the great diversity of human culture may it be for us more stimulating than threatening for the turning of swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks and bombs into hope we pray O oh God for this church and all churches everywhere by all of its various names and in all of its places may the church be a, a continuing place and a channel of grace and hope for its witness to love and unity and justice for its commitment to hospitality and compassion we commend to you O oh God our families and our friends and we ask you to help us in the days that are yet before us help us to feel your presence near to us we offer this prayer in the name of the one who did come near to us in human form who taught his disciples and all his followers to pray using these words our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen Thinking back to our gospel reading and the story of Jesus about the planting of seed, let us sing together from Voices United 300, God whose farm is all creation.
Everybody here? Yes. yes. Reverend Kate, would you come up? Please. As you all know, this is the last official day of the supply ministry of our wonderful team of Reverend Brian and Reverend Kay. Um, in my opinion, it was far more than, than pulpit supply. Um, I can tell you that it was almost two years ago today that we received the news that we'd be without the minister. And frankly, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit concerned about what it would look like. And when I look at there today and see all of you who are here because of cake, um, <laughs> actually because of the two of you, um, there's no doubt about that in, in my mind, what this is going to look like. Um, like I said, far more than pulpit supply, it was about your guidance, your support, your kindness, your compassion, the visitation that thankfully you both have agreed to continue to do for us. And we thank you for that. I know how much it meant to the congregation, um, those who are here and those who are not here, and, and certainly in times of need. It's about helping us find a new minister, um, which is an exciting phase that we're heading into, but a little bit of a scary one, so we're happy that you'll be here for our transition. So um, not only that, but also being able to have uh, council uh, meetings continue. I'm a new chair of council, so I appreciate the guidance and your knowledge, um, certainly with the help with the Community of Faith profile that we had to uh, prepare to get our new minister. So on behalf of the congregation, I sincerely thank you both for having been with us for these past two years. I'm happy that you will continue to be with us. Um, but from the bottom of our hearts, thank you and a blessing. We have a small talk. Sunday morning, quite often with a prop or two. 
One thing I love about Brian is a sense of humor. One day he came into the office and told me a woman had just been <coughs> gazing deeply into his eyes. He had just come from the optometrist's office. <laughs> Brian has lots and lots and lots of stories from his many years in ministry. Some are funny and some sad, but all bookworthy, which I think you should write someday, Brian. One other thing about Brian, he loves to tease. I try to be very careful not to misspell his name, which I have done many times as Brain, not Brian. <laughs> Spell check doesn't quite catch that reversed I and A. But I actually think he likes being called Brain. <laughs> Brian's easygoing manner draws you to him, and you know you have a trusted friend. It is so evident that both Kay and Brian have a heart and a love for God and his people. No two people could be any better suited for ministry. They have been such a blessing to Nashua Sis United in a time of need. I know they've brought stability, knowledge, joy, laughter, compassion, comfort to many these past two years. Through the Ministry of Visitation, weekly services, phone calls, and just the daily presence. I personally look forward to many more years of friendship with both Kate and Brian. I hope you'll both drop by the office often for a visit. One thing from UCW I have to uh, mention, I guess, because they've already been mentioned, but there is enough food out in the kitchen. <laughs> so please come out and get your lunch out there before you go. Thank you.
Thank you, each of you, for your support, your kindness, your compassion and caring, and your time and energy that you gave so freely to us. <clears throat> and to the Nash Rock City Worship, Nash Rock says Worship Committee. May God bless you both with good health and much joy and happiness today and always. Hugs and much love to both of you from all of us on Pastor Care Committee. Now my grandkids used to give us hoogly hugs on the computer because we couldn't get together during COVID and it was one like this. So you can get that from all of us. Plus one for me too. And he said, that's 
that's Debbie's pew, and that's the rock, so she can find out which pew it is. Now, I don't know whether it's still there. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, when, when I talked to Brian, I didn't know where I had found this rock, so I took it to coffee and, and gave it to Debbie, and, and yes, she put it back in the pew so she knows where to sit. Now, Brian and Kay are both supposedly retired, but do ministers ever really retire? Perhaps now they will have more time to do some of the things that retired people should be doing but I'm sure it'll be short-lived. On behalf of the worship committee and the congregation, I would like to thank you both for coming to our rescue when we were without a full-time minister. We could have not asked for a better fit. And as my daughter-in-law once said about Vince and I, when she was uh, talking to her colleagues about her in-laws, I couldn't have gotten better if I ordered them in the Sears catalog. <laughs> I would like to present each of you a small gift from the worship committee. For my, many of you, I've only been here two years. That's really not true. A number of years ago, I got to know some of the men in this congregation through men's work here in the Maritimes. And then you had the nerve to call two ministers who were colleagues of mine. We studied together and we were ordained as ministers together. Reverend Doug Woods and the Reverend Frank Curtis. And then, a number of years ago, you chose a young man to come and lead your youth group. I thought it was for a year or two, I didn't know the full story. My son was here for five years. So when I was asked to come and work here, I thought, I don't have a choice. <laughs> you know, sons are supposed to follow in their father's footsteps, but I chose to follow in my son's footsteps. And it's been a delightful two years. It's not, uh, it's not the end, as some of you might think. Because there have been some conversation about Kay and I not splitting as a team. Although we're both taking a bit of a break. We're still going to be working together in the fall. And then that, that worship committee, they, they just never stop. <laughs> Because already there are some services coming up in the fall that, that uh, Richard's going to be away. Guess whose phone rang? <laughs> that wasn't in the middle of the night, though, thankfully. So the relationship will continue. The rock will stay in the pew. <laughs> so that my wife can find a place to sit. Thank you for your welcome to me and to Debbie for our welcoming into your worship your homes, your times of fellowship. Thank you from the depths of our heart.
he, he signed on for us to be doing equal work, but as it turned out, I had to take some time, move back from work because of health condition. And he, he, he took up the load for that, so thank you, Brian. And of course, we are already have been recruited for some place else. And when I was called, I said, is Brian going to be the one to work with me? <laughs> but I haven't accepted. I don't know what Brian has or not. But you said no as well. <laughs> okay. it, it has been great to be here. This is my home congregation, and I'm very proud of it. And when I'm not in the pulpit, you'll probably see me in the pews. Uh, when I'm around, we're going to do a little bit of traveling and uh, come fall, be back to visiting again. And visitation has been so wonderful. As I have told my congregations that I've been with, you don't get to know somebody by shaking their hand at the door. But when you're invited into their home or to sit down with them to chat, you really get to know people. And that has been so wonderful. In this congregation, some of you are here, some of you who may be listening online today. It's been wonderful to be able to, to get to know you. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for all these gifts. And, and uh, also thank you to Linda Jean, who has come on board with us as well. I've really appreciated working with her, and uh, she's been very helpful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. 